My name is Tim Morris-Jones, I'm a Director of Photography. I started off at the age of 21, went onto a film set for the first time. I used to be an animator and I went onto a film set and I absolutely loved it. Uh, started off as a trainee, focus puller, camera operator, director of photography. The most important thing when you're a cinematographer is to remember that you're there as a tool for the director. That's all you are. You're trying to recognise the director's vision. So there's no point the director having one vision and me going off in another direction. That's not what I'm there for. I'm there to make the film the director wants. Sometimes the director doesn't know what film he wants visually, then it's up to me to choose a visual style which works with the script. There's no point me, if I've got a romantic comedy, having really fast camera moves, gritty lighting, telephoto lenses, because that's not what a romantic comedy is. And vice versa, if I'm doing a gangster movie, I don't want to light it with a camera hardly moving and beautiful colours and beautiful sunshine pouring in the windows. So what I have to do is to make sure that my photography is elevating the script and creating an atmosphere which enhances the story the director's trying to tell. When composing a shot, it really is for me about does it look good? And that's really, that's all I'm about. So it's not only about where the subject is in the frame, which you know I might put them on the right hand side, leave a lot of space on the left. But then it's also, when you're in a room, you look around, what's a good background? Do I want that background in focus, out of focus? Do I want the subject to be separated from his background by a shallow depth of field? Or do I want to connect him more to the background? When I'm shooting two people talking, do I want to have an over shoulder so I see who he's talking to? Or do I want to go for a single composition? Because sometimes when you have to do an over shoulder shot, you compromise the photography a bit because the left hand side of your frame is someone's out of focus back of head. I understand that sometimes you need to connect the two people together, but for me, I quite like to go mid, sh uh, mid shots and close ups to be clean, just because I can make a more beautiful composition. When it comes to new technology, I'm not really that interested. What interests me is how the picture looks. So, you know, I need to know a bit about which camera am I going to choose. Am I going to choose an Alexa, which will look a bit grittier than a red camera, which looks a bit glossy and clean. The advantage of a digital camera when lighting a scene is you can see exactly what you've got. The disadvantage is I think you take less risks. I think when I'm shooting on film, I would be braver. And because you didn't know, you just well, let's just see what happens. It looks, I think it looks right. And you'll take bigger risks. When, it, when you're shooting on digital, I may want to have the background 10 stops overexposed, but the director or the producer may go, oh, it looks a bit bright back there. Are you sure about that? Or I might want the actor to look a certain way. And the director goes, oh, I'd, I'd like him to be a bit more lit when I'd like him to look a bit more moody. So a lot of those decisions that I would make have been taken out and put into a committee format rather than me just making a determination about what I thought was aesthetically correct. Uh, the fun thing about shooting on film is you can kind of know what you're going to get. You know 90%, but sometimes you get some really good surprises. Like, oh, that looks, wow, that looks amazing. I didn't expect that. Look how those colors have come out. Look at how the background has come out. So I like the surprise of shooting on film. You're generally getting what you want, but it's that when you see the film developed and it comes back and you watch it, it's a thrill. Wow, that looks amazing. I started filming on film. I did 25 years exclusively on film and I find it very easy. The camera has got one switch. It's, it's switched on or it's switched off. And everything else you do with moving the lights around and composition. I think sometimes when you have too many choices, you know, with a digital camera, then everybody is looking at it. You've got a big HD, HD screen. Everybody has an opinion on how it looks. Whereas it used to be that I would be the one that choose, chooses how it looks and they would trust me. I, I imagine eventually film cameras will become obsolete and it's, the main problem is producers who are younger and cameramen who are younger don't trust the medium. I grew up doing it so I trust it completely. I've shot many movies on film, hundreds of music videos and it always works. I've never lost a shot. But I think the perception is, well, we don't know what we're getting. We don't know if it's going to come out. It could be ruined in the laboratory. And that makes people very nervous. So uh, the younger generations aren't shooting on it as much. 
I like shooting on it, it looks great. Um, but I also like shooting on the Alexa. You know, if you're, if you're putting your lights in the right place and you're composing properly, um, it's almost as good. Not quite as good, but there's, it's very close. Uh, I will shoot on film every opportunity I get. Um, I shoot enough on digital. At the moment I'm doing one or two jobs a year on film and I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, it's just a, it's, it's going back to what I'm used to and where I'm comfortable. For lighting on film and lighting on digitally are two very different things. The way you light for film is a very different way than when you light on digital. When you're lighting on digital, you need to underexpose everything a little bit. When you're lighting on film, I would overexpose everything a stop or half a stop to get a clean, brighter negative. So if you don't make your changes, and there's a DOP, you're going to fall behind.